this. Yes. Okay. I will just start. Apologies to those who are um, coming in late. You can hopefully catch the beginning on YouTube. So um, what I wanted to talk about today is annotation. Um, as of ZenML 0 0.11, uh, we now have an annotator stack component. Um, and an integration with uh, Label Studio, which is our first um, first integration with with an annotation tool. And before starting, maybe it's just worth motivating why we're talking about annotation in the first place. Um, annotation um, uh, for those of you who are on the data science side of things, um, you know, maybe you don't necessarily come into uh, into contact with annotation too much, but traditionally, um, annotation is kind of treated as a separate silo. Um, there's a lot of manual process um, and interactions between the annotation team and whoever is doing the ML modeling. Um, there's a whole bunch of kind of uh, often complex conversions between different annotation formats. Um, uh, things are, you know, files are sent to each other via email. There's, there's all sorts of ways where the, um, uh, the, the, the kind of manual annotation process as it's traditionally done is not treated as part of the main MLOps project or work. It's kind of seen as something outside. And what we've done with this uh, this new stack component and this new integration is try to uh, motivate and encourage uh, seeing annotation as part of the, the whole uh, workflow. And those of you who are familiar with the idea of data-centric AI and kind of um, similar discussions, uh, more and more there's this attempt to bring data in uh, as a first-class citizen as well as all of the things around data, such as uh, such as annotation. So what I'm going to do today is uh, kind of lead you through a very simple uh, example involving my cat, Arya, who you can see here on the left. Um, uh, we're going to train a, a pretty simple um, image classification model, uh, which will detect whether Arya is in the image or not. Um, we're going to run it all on a local stack. Um, obviously, in production, we want to do something Different, probably on a uh, in the cloud using GPUs and so on. But this is just for for demonstration purposes to see how how the kind of continuous annotation process works. Um, and of course, I would just add that annotation and labeling is something which happens at various different places. Um, as you can see on the right, uh, different places in your um, your ML your kind of ML workflow. Um, either at the beginning or at the end or in the middle. Um, we've made some decisions for this example about which bits we're showing, showcasing where annotation can work. But um, with the kind of the um, the kind of the agnostic way that we've uh, we've implemented it, you can uh, you can do annotation in, in various different places um, uh, depending on how you how you code it up. Um, so yeah. Um, so just just a, again, a kind of reiterating about that uh, that stack, we've got two pipelines. I'll talk about them in a little bit more as we run them. Uh, we uh, we're running um, everything on a, with a local orchestrator, a local metadata store. We have this new Label Studio annotator um, um, uh, stack component, uh, and we have uh, a cloud artifact store and a cloud secrets manager. Um, and this is a current limitation or or just a reality of the um, uh, the stack component that we've the Label Studio integration that it needs to run on a cloud artifact store, um, but at some point in the future, hopefully, we can build in uh, a way to run this uh, completely locally. Um, so I'll just show you uh, what our stack looks like. Um, So yeah, that's that's just another representation of the same thing. Um, and, save to, uh, and you can see some of the pro properties on our uh, on our annotator. Uh, just want to show you um, basically how the how the Label Studio one is created. Um, uh, it actually Label Studio um, spins up a server in order to run for you to do annotation on your local computer. ZenML handles that all for you. Uh, so with a simple ZML stack up command, um, this will spin up a daemon process um, and the Label Studio server. So you don't need to, to fiddle around with, with all that. And if we go to uh, to that address, uh, you see we, we have um, Label Studio. 
Um, there are no projects. There's nothing here because we haven't done anything yet. But um, yeah, that's that's kind of our our starting point. Uh, then we'll kind of move on to the the training pipeline, which um, I will actually start running uh, as I while I talk you through it. Uh, so we just pop in a train flag um, so it knows which pipeline to run. So what this is this pipeline is doing uh, as it runs in the background, it's going to uh, get or create a data set. So this is kind of the label studio way of of talking about like the the set of annotations that we're working on or the project that we're working on. It's going to check whether we've got any labeled data. We haven't done, done anything so far, so nothing will come out of this step. We're going to try and convert these non-existent annotations. Uh, so again, not, nothing will, will come out of that. Um, and then we're going to try and train a model. Obviously, this is the first time we're running things. So we're really bootstrapping ourselves from zero. So what we do here instead of uh, doing any training or fine tuning or anything, we just grab a pre-trained model. Um, so we're using a very very simple uh, here mobile net v3 small, uh, kind of 25 megabyte uh, model, um, which um, allows you to um, yeah we can do some kind of uh, image classification off the basis of that. We haven't fine tuned it, so it's not going to be very good uh, at all. I imagine it's kind of 50 50 whether it gets things right. Uh, but then at the end of this, we're going to um, we've mocked up a kind of a deployment uh, where basically we have access to that model later on, should we wish to do uh, to do inference. And that pipeline has uh, has finished now, um, so that's great. Uh, now what we want to do is run our inference pipeline, which is the second of the two pipelines. Uh, so I'll just set that one. And in our inference pipeline, what we're doing is, uh, in fact, I'll show you that the code on the left uh, might be nice for you to see. Um, in our inference pipeline, what we're doing is we're getting or creating a data set again. We're querying the, the Label Studio kind of project. Uh, we are, at this point, we're getting a bunch of images. So we've got 10 images in a batch um, that we want uh, to, to, run, uh, to run inference on using that pre-trained model that we um, created or, or returned from the, uh, from the training pipeline. Um, we then have uh, a prediction service loader and a predictor, as the prediction service loader is just getting that model from the previous training pipeline. The predictor is then running inference over all of these uh, 10 images, uh, determining whether these images are ARIA or not. And then we're syncing all of this to Label Studio. And this pipeline is finished. So now we can go back to, um, uh, in fact, I can show you the CLI first. Uh, so if we just list our, our data set, we should see that we have a new data set, um, which was set in the kind of the config parameters of our, of our um, uh, training pipeline. Um, it's querying our cloud artifact store, or it's querying, yeah, um, and label studio. Um, and so we have an ARIA detector. Um, so now what we can do, uh, we can get some stats on the annotations. Um, let's see, um, uh, let's see whether our our annotations sync through to to Label Studio. And here you can see, and I can make it a little bit bigger for you, maybe. Um, uh, the total annotation tasks are ten. Uh, unlabeled ones are ten, so we haven't done any labeling. So this all makes sense. Uh, so now I'll switch over uh, and I'll refresh uh, Label Studio. And you can see we've got a new project here, the ARIA Detector project. Uh, there's 10. Um, it's again, it's replicating the stats you just saw. So if we click through to this, you'll see we have 10 images. Um, uh, this column shows the pre annotations uh, or pr predictions. And this column shows the ones we've confirmed or not. So really, you know, as part of our continuous loop, we should do some annotation at this point. So let's go in and label some tasks. So this is not ARIA. So we can confirm that. Uh, this is also not ARIA. We can confirm that. This is ARIA. ARIA has a very distinct face. Like ARIA is lying on the floor next to me. And this is also ARIA. And this is ARIA. And this is ARIA. This is not ARIA. This is Glupus. This is also Glupus. Very distinct face. This is the same. So we have no more tasks. We're done with our, our annotation. Um, if we go back and refresh the page, 
uh, you can see that we have this long list of ones here that shows that we've got 10 confirmed, uh, 10 confirmed annotations. Um, uh, and we can show the same thing uh, back in here with the, uh, with the stats, um, just to confirm that, that indeed we do, we, we have processed those, uh, those annotations. Uh, and we can actually show uh, a visualization of the, um, we can use our the ZenML dash visualizer um, uh, in order to show uh, show some of the pipeline that we ran. Um, here, this is showing the the training pipeline that we ran earlier. Uh, it's just a different way of seeing uh, seeing the pipelines that we're uh, that we're running. And you can click, of course, on the different steps, see where the artifacts are stored. Um, some of them have, um, yeah, we can see the different parameters which are being passed in uh, and so on. But for now, we'll go back to, to our pipeline. Um, uh, what we're going to do is rerun the training pipeline since we now have some annotations and we want to um, pass in this rerun flag. I'll make it a bit bigger so that you can see. Um, we're going to rerun this and actually fine tune uh, that. Um, uh, that pre-trained model that we had from earlier, because we've got some annotations, we want to make our our inference better. In fact, here Aria's Aria's tail is making it look future. Um, so this is running our our training pipeline. It's getting that same data set. It's getting the newly labeled data that we have. Uh, it is converting um, the annotations into a format that PyTorch can use, um, because the annotations are stored in a kind of Label Studio specific uh, format uh, in the intermediary forms, so we need to convert them. Uh, then quite soon, it's going to start the model trainer. I'm not running the model trainer for many epochs because I'm on a CPU and it would take too long. I think we're only running it for for a couple of epochs, but hopefully you should, we should see some improvement at least um, in, uh, in the inference, oh, sorry, in the um, at least the loss should go down. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's running. I can turn off the, the dash visualization and return return you here. So we're just yeah we're running this PyTorch model trainer step, um, passing in a special config which contains all of the parameters, the number of epochs, all of these kinds of things. Which, because they're ZML artifacts and they're being passed into the pipeline, um, we're um, versioning them and, and storing them and so on. Uh, and of course, there's more fancy things you could do with, with MLflow or weights and biases or whatever to, to track your training process. But we're keeping it relatively simple for now. So once this, uh, this training is done, it's going to materialize the model up into the Cloud Artifact Store. Um, there you go. Our loss improved a little bit. Um, and uh, then it will be available for us to run our inference pipeline again. Uh, except when we run the inference pipeline again, we're going to run it on uh, a whole new different set of data um, because we want to uh, to showcase whether um, uh, a whether the model model has improved, but just showcase a workflow of the kind of this continuous iterating between your annotation process and your model training process. And inspecting the data and so on. This kind of very circular process. So we'll run the inference pipeline again. I'll get that going, and I'll just show you the pipeline again. And so we're using a different set of data now. We're running uh, batch two, uh, which has a completely different set of images. So these new images will get synced along with the predictions from the new model. Again, we're getting this new model that we 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 just fine fine tuned. Um, all of this will then be available in a second in uh, in Label Studio, and we can uh, check out um, whether it got any better. Um, don't hold your breath for massive improvements, unfortunately, given the two epochs that we trained for and the 10 images to be used. Um, so yeah, it's calculating the predictions now. And in a second, we should be able to switch back to to Label Studio. So normally what would happen, yeah, you, you there would be a lot of manual conversion and manual steps linking all of these things together. Um, and the annotation tool would kind of be to one side. In any case, that's finished now. 
So if we go back, we'll see there's another 10 images um, uh, which needs um, have have predicted annotations based on our new model, uh, but ha don't have annotations confirmed. So we can click Label All Tasks to get the latest ones. Uh, this indeed is not ARIA. This is actually not ARIA. Um, so it got that one wrong. Um, this is also not ARIA. This is ARIA. In any case, the model didn't turn out to be very good, but that's what happens when you don't train it for very long. Uh, I hope you you got the idea, at least, uh, of this process um, in general. Um, so yeah, I guess to, to kind of sum up, um, we now have this annotation stack component, which you can use at the moment with, with Label Studio. But of course, uh, as with other things in, in, in ZenML, it's extensible. You can uh, definitely um, uh, will will look into adding adding more and, and, and hopefully kind of accept more community uh, contributions there. Um, uh, because it's NML, all of the annotations uh, and the predictions that you're making, and of course, all of the data that you're materializing in your pipeline, all of this is versioned. Um, you have it all under one hood. Uh, it's kind of one tool to uh, to rule them all. Um, and you have dynamic access to Label Studio within your, within your ZML um, pipelines and so on, which makes it really nice to, to build in this, this continuous process. And in general, yeah, we're, you know, uh, we're trying to reduce the amount of pain um, by bringing this in as part of the, the wider MLOps stack. Um, so I will leave it there. Um, I realized there was a lot of things uh, all at once there. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen, maybe, and see if there are any questions or discussions about anything.